Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. As you know, the past couple of weeks I've been going through how to get started with iTunes, download, install, put your music on there, how to also create playlists, smart playlists, look at the music store, what podcasts are all about, and also just a little tip because there's some tutorials on there on how to use a Mac or Windows to get DVDs onto your computer as well, which in some places is illegal, but I'll show you anyway. Um, it is okay if you get them and they are actually copyright free, that's no problem with that, but actually if it's movies or TV shows or some other material, you may need to get the permission to do that, so you have been warned, but nevertheless, I'll show you anyway. But anyway, what I want to show you, aside from all of that, is I did mention last week that iTunes is actually also really good for backing these up and also for things like the iPad as well. And also iPods, any iPod and any iPod Touch too. So it's really great for backing up and it's also useful for organising your material as well. So just how do you do that? Well firstly you need to connect this to the computer and I'm going to do that and then show you how it works. Now you'll see it being used on a Mac but that doesn't matter because the way it works on a Mac and a PC it's pretty much the same. So let's just take a look. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in my device, in this case it's going to be my iPhone and the first thing it should do when it connects up, it does charge it up as well uh, so if you are running on a laptop and you are running low on power that could be a problem, you might need to plug it in. So it will take a moment to detect the device and then it will come up in my listing on the side here under devices and there you can see it's got my iPhone. If I click on it, it takes me to this summary page here. As you can see there's restore as well which I'm going to use later. So it takes me to my summary page, tells me who I am, my serial number, my phone number which I've had to blur out here. There are other things you can do such as open iTunes when this phone is connected so it will automatically switch it on and it will do things like sync only checked songs and videos and things like that. If I go to info you'll see that I have other things here as well like syncing my address books and so on and my email accounts. I can see my apps as well so what I can do is I can actually tick the apps that I want to keep on the phone so if I've downloaded too many I can now manage my apps I can untick it here so as not to sync any apps at all but I can actually go down this list and choose ones that actually I don't want. I could also rearrange them on the side here just simply clicking and dragging to move them around. Here are all the screens you know like when you're swiping through so I can actually just click and drag it if I wanted to to another screen although I'm not going to do that on this because I've got mine neatly arranged. Now my phone should be syncing right now um, it should have been backing up so if I go back to here and I just hit info and if I was just to hit apply Sometimes it's a sync button down here. Yep, there we go. Up at the top, it's starting sync. You'll see on your device it says sync in progress. I can slide to cancel on the device or I can click here and you can see that it's also telling me what step it's actually up to. So whilst it's backing up, back to the apps, things do run a little bit slower whilst it's syncing. Um, so also down here, you can see I've got things like file sharing. I do have some on here some other apps where I can transfer files from here onto the device. So I've got something here called Stanza which is for reading books. I can click on add, find them on the computer and put them on here. VLC is a good one for looking at video files that may not actually already be compatible with any of these iDevices. Okay it's telling me that it's actually finished and that there were some problems they're just because they're files that it possibly can't find that I've deleted off. I've got ringtones on here as well, I've got a few there, I've got music and on all of these you can see I can sync or unsync so if I turn that off no music at all. I can do the entire library but as I said that could be very big. So what I've done is I've selected playlists, artists, albums and genres and I can include music videos as well and voice memos and you could get it to automatically fill any free space with other songs that aren't on that list. So if I go down here in my playlists, I can go down my playlists and I can tick which ones I want to appear in. It will put the playlist on the device so you'll actually see it there 
and it will also take any of the necessary songs across as well. So if I scroll down here you'll see there's certain ones that I've ticked. If I don't want it I untick it and down the bottom here you can see how much space I've actually got left so I might need to actually clear some off. So I can choose particular playlists, I can choose particular artists as well so in addition to any of these I might think actually I want this one as well so I would just simply or maybe this one here I simply tick it okay I'm not going to um, I'm just going to untick that by the way looking at some of these songs here some of these are also my wife's playlist too I could tell it to sync up particular genres and it would take every single one across I can choose so you'll see I've got any particular artist there and I could choose one but I'm not going to because otherwise it's going to mess up my syncing I've got genres on here as well which you'll see you could just tick and again it would copy them all across so this is how you can manage it rather than just putting absolutely everything across you can choose either particular albums and a genre and you could also choose to have a playlist or artists so it's entirely up to you you can select from any of those you can mix and match I tend to use the playlist because I know what I've got then and I just tick the ones I want so if there's something I'm not really listening to anymore I might decide that I'll just switch it off so I might find one here and just go for it same for movies as well if I click on movies it's sync movies I can automatically choose to sync all of them or I could choose the most recent ones and like the three most recent unwatched ones unwatched recent ones but I prefer to untick it and choose which ones I want and you can see here that all I need to do is simply tick on the one I want you can see the file size here that's quite a large one and I can scroll down this list to find more and then when I do I just simply click on apply videos tend to take up the most space you can see down the bottom here on this capacity bit that's the video it's all color coded and I might actually think about switching some of them on and off and you can see not much space left here once I've done that I can then just click on apply and it will sync those up and again it will slow this down a bit so what I do is that if I've finished watching a movie I untick it so that if I'm not watching it again it frees up space on the iPhone so I'm always like taking things on and off because I do watch a lot of videos as you can imagine that's part of my job as well so there's also TV shows here as well you can see I've got some here and with TV shows they're actually in episodes so what I can do is I can tick say the Big Bang Theory here and it would put all of the episodes on or if I click on the Big Bang Theory I can choose particular ones that I want to watch okay so you could have all of them or you could tick that season or particular episodes in seasons and you could have that season and then say one other season and so on it's entirely up to you so I could tick that and choose that as it happens I'm not going to have these actually I could free up a bit of space by getting rid of those some of these here these were free so they were worth checking out and you'll see I've got some on here as well that keep kids entertained too these devices are great for keeping kids entertained so again click on apply you'll see at the top it's always showing you where it's up to and what it's actually copying and again as I've said it does actually slow down a little bit as well so it's not doing too badly I haven't really sped anything up here yet I might speed this bit up but actually I think I can wait whilst I tell you that I'm about to go to podcasts there's iTunes U2 which I didn't discuss when we used the iTunes store but a lot of universities are starting to put material on there as well and there's some great stuff from lectures and special lectures like I watched one the other day I think it was George Lucas who gave a short talk and that was really useful I can't remember where it was there's also books as well if I've downloaded any books they're getting synced here as well so again I can tick and untick those and once that has actually finished spinning around I'll show you how the photos work podcasts again I end up with loads of podcasts possibly even more than the movies and the TV shows so I'm just clicking on that podcasts so here are my podcasts again I could automatically include all episodes of selected podcasts you could choose again all this recent unplayed all new you could choose all podcasts I like the selected option and you can see I've got a few here I could choose some and you can see I could tick to show an entire 
one here and I've got quite a few down this list so I'm just going to quickly scan through. I've got actually, let me go back, there's jargon free help. There we are. Now that syncs all of them and it tells me how many episodes I've got, how many I haven't watched. So I can click on that and you can see they're all ticked. The circle shows me that I haven't watched it, that's partially watched and I've also got jargon free tutorials as well. So that automatically syncs up. I can go through this list and if I go down here to my NASA ones, I know terribly geeky, there's the space shuttle ones, click on that and what I do, it's not ticked here, I've individually selected the ones that I want. So if I've watched them now, I can now say right I've seen that one, well actually I haven't seen that one, um, I have watched some down here, some that I've unticked, so I might untick that one there and I could go through and actually choose, if I click on here there's some I might, oh, that might be nice, that mystery of the dolphins. Click apply and it will sync my podcast as well. You can create playlists with podcasts in them as well. So they'll play one after each other. So I could take, say, one that is help my business. I could take a jargon free one followed by a NASA one. So I can create that in a playlist and then I could just tick it on this list and that would sort that out. Once that's done, I click on apply. Before I do that, there's iTunes U. Here are the books and again you can tick and untick whatever you want. So what I could do, whether it's a PC or a Mac, you can just choose your own folder where you might have them in. Choose folder. I'm on the desktop. I've got a folder here called photos. I could choose a folder here or it would actually pick up all the folders in there. I click on choose and then I can just choose which folders I want within there or I could have all the folders and then it doesn't list them. Or I could simply click on it and select the ones I want and I could include any videos in there as well. Okay, so that's how you can actually manage your photos better. So basically you just choose the folder, whether it's on a PC or a Mac, it doesn't matter. You just have to go to the folder you want and then you can choose whether or not you want all the folders or selected folders in there. Okay, well as you can see it's quite straightforward and as you can see when I plugged it in it automatically backed up because that's just a great thing to do and do you know what, that saves people a load of time. And if you know me, I'm always going on about backing up, I don't think people do it often enough and one of the great things that I do like about the iPhone is that people do that and then they say they haven't lost their contacts when they need to restore it all. Restoring is dead easy, if you get a new phone you simply plug it in, it will detect it's a new phone and it will list your backups because you may have more than one thing being backed up on there. For instance, I have the iPhone and the iPad and it will say, where do I want to back up from? And everything, my contacts, my notes, my pictures, everything will all be put back where it was before. It takes a little time, but that's great. The other thing you could do is you could connect up and if you want to restore everything, like you just want to wipe everything and again, you do this at your own risk, you can then simply plug it in, it goes to the summary page and then simply you just click on the restore button and again it will ask you what backup you want to take it from. So if your phone is playing up that could be a solution to actually clearing everything off and start again. I have done that once, I once had a big problem with that and this was just one way that I resolved it. Anyway, thanks for watching. You've got loads to try out, three weeks of all sorts of things that I've shown you to do with iTunes, so that's really useful. So go and check that out, and what you'll see is that it's actually a really, really useful tool. A lot of people don't like it, I do like it, and when you know how to use it, I think you might find that actually, if you haven't already liked it, that you might come to enjoy using it. It's just great for storing your material on there. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.